Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing? You know what? It's the Christmas season. I'm not going to complain. Uh, what we're doing here today, we're going to jump right into it. What we're doing here today is talking about National Signing Day. National Signing Day has wrapped. Um, this is the early National Signing Day, of course. Um, a bit of a rough, bit of a rough day for Ohio State. It, it could have gone worse. Had some scares, yes. um, but it could have gone better. Um, lost a wide receiver to Oregon, lost a running back uh, to Miami. We 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 knew we knew Lyle was gonna go. Um, mm. McClellan was. You know, that that rumor was out there, but it didn't it didn't feel like a certainty. So that one that one sucked when it happened. Um, the the good news is, is that despite a lot of reporting otherwise, um, Ohio State did end up with Edric Houston. Uh, we, a lot of us woke up Wednesday morning hearing that Edric Houston was absolutely gone to Bama. And. I think some crystal balls came in and uh but you know then he didn't sign then he didn't sign then he didn't sign then late in the day late in the day it was like okay he actually is coming to ohio state so it kind of felt like he flipped and then he flipped and then he flipped back mm -hmm. well, even if it was all off, happening behind the scenes that's off to uh to bill uh Kierlich, though that's off to you good sir <laughs> hey but yeah you that, know. that was that was a big that was that was a big scare um because you already lost one of your um gems in the defensive line already earlier in the recruiting cycle with scott yeah and then and then losing losing edrick houston would have just been oh uh was buckeye nation was buckeye nation was already just ready to start uh just lighting torches yeah 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 already yeah uh people were definitely the people were ready to fire larry johnson over that and and when i say people i mean fans i don't mean yeah. day and crew yeah. but uh 18 uh zach i believe the class is currently sitting at 20 Coaching if that's what one. you're talking well I, is the long snapper signed um no not according to 24 7 but maybe 24 7 just hasn't updated that i'm not sure um okay yeah so there's 20 signed. yeah 20 signed one of them is the launch sapper um evans who, yeah, so 20 20 has signed and then evan and if evans has signed he's at 21 but like i said 24 7 currently says he hasn't i don't know if he's gray shirt or maybe they just haven't updated his profile i'm not sure um, not sure, but, uh, yeah, it's not, it's a good class. It's a really, really good class. The guys who showed up, I feel great about even the guys who you look at who maybe aren't ranked super high. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's uh, Jared just said it's really good class. It's av average per recruit, just under 93. It's 92.92. So really, really good class. Just the one thing that I'm really uh, just questioning here is the amount of commits. I know yeah. that sometimes, you know, sometimes you try to maybe put all your eggs in one basket here, and hopefully, hopefully you get those good eggs there. And if not, then your your class, your your recruiting class here is a lot smaller because. You look at you look at the top commits here. Uh, Georgia has twenty eight. Bama has twenty five. Miami has twenty seven. Uh, Oregon twenty six. Yeah. Uh, Oklahoma twenty eight. Like they're up there. They have they have a lot of recruits. And then here's Ohio State with twenty. Yeah. Twenty one with a long snapper. But it's just like, yeah. It's I know there's a lot of Ohio, a lot of 
a lot of people are talking about like Ohio State needs to start recruiting more because of knowing how many people are going to leave in the transfer portal. I mean, we saw, gosh, how, how many are in the transfer portal right now? How many Ohio State has lost? And they're, they're not getting that many back from uh, coming in from the um, the portal as well, too. So Ohio currently, State is going to be currently lacking the numbers. Mm -hmm. Currently 17 exiting from the portal. And for what it's worth, and, and we've talked about this already, so I'm not going to go into super big detail here. <clears throat> I don't think, I mean, I think you would have want to have kept Kyle McCord. Obviously, um, I wouldn't have guaranteed him a starting spot. But I would have want to have kept him. And like, I would have liked to have had Fleming back. There's, I mean, any of these, there are a lot of guys I'd like to have back, but <clears throat> excuse me. No offense to any of the Ohio State kids who went into the portal. None of them were for sure starters next year. Fleming probably would have started. McCord could have started. Um, but I don't see any bona fide starters. And, and quite frankly, I look at Ohio State's roster currently. And depending upon who comes back and who doesn't come back, Ohio State has a lot of fat to trim off of the roster still. I think there's a lot of guys who could potentially see their way out. So depending upon where Ohio State supplements in the portal and who they can convince to come back, you're going to see a lot more transfers. Uh, Ohio State's not done putting players into the portal and it's not a bad thing um yeah but that depth chart is really certain to really thin down though depends upon the position there are positions where it can where it can be pretty comfortably thinned it it can't it can but that that 85 scholarship limit is how state will be i i think it will be well under that when it's all said and done again, for... I think that depends upon who does and doesn't leave and who, you know, they, they get via the portal. Um, they're not doing great in the portal right now. Um, they've swung and that, missed that's, on a that's couple an understatement. That's an understatement, Jared, not doing great. They're, they're doing, they're doing terrible. Just call it what it is. They're, they're like, well, not... it, they're not, they're, two, they're not two of the offensive tackles that they were wanting to get out of the portal ended up just taking their names out of the portal. They ended up staying where they are. Um, mm -hmm. They they do lose out on uh, Elam's or who went to TCU. Mm -hmm. They do miss out on uh, the safety Ramsey, who's going to USC. That sucked. That one hurt. I think Ohio State could have really used a starter at safe at the safety position um as proctor's leaving and it i i'm hearing that ransom's going to leave although that's not confirmed um and it sounds like sunny styles is not going to maybe not going to be playing safety next year you know it's a lot of names ticking out of that out of that safety room yeah. So I don't know. It's, it is. But we'll, we'll do a depth chart. We'll do a depth chart prediction sometime in, in January. This, this isn't what we're doing here today. Um, yeah. But I'm just saying, yes. like, even if you the, the as to Kyle's point, there's not enough players in this class. But. I really I, I also don't think there's any like. I don't think there's any fat on this either, like it's a very lean class. And I, and I say that not just as a way of saying that it's small. I, I'm saying that in that I don't think, and of course, like, who knows, right? Players bust, like five-star players bust. You never, ever, ever know. Uh, you know, you don't really know how good a class is until, like, the end of their sophomore year. But I, I don't see, I don't see any fat on the roster. This is a lean roster. Uh, I mean... 
Leroy Roker is the lowest rated guy. And he was a guy who just didn't flash until his senior year. Ohio State was able to get in there and snag Leroy Roker. Um, Sam William Dixon is not a highly rated guy, but he's a Pickerington kid. And he is, you know, one of the reasons why maybe he's not rigged super highly is because he maybe doesn't fit super neatly into the running back box. You know, he's he's a versatile, dare I say, Curtis Samuel esque player. We we don't necessarily, you know, he doesn't fit. Like I said, he doesn't like fit neatly into the running back box from an eval standpoint. Um, the Armstrong twins are like the next lowest guys. Um, by the way, they're both being marked as tackles now. One of them was being marked as a slash, um, but they're both being marked as tackles now. Not super highly ranked guys, you know, from a national standpoint, but. I, I love them. I, I think that they're going to be fantastic. Um, Ryan Day had some incredibly nice things to say about them as well. Um, the uh, This is from Tony Gerdeman. The Armstrong brothers have great work ethic. They improve year after year, week after week. Um, I had another one here for them, I thought. I'm, I'm not seeing it right away but yeah like i really like those two i do like that they're considering both of them tackles now um but it, like i said like it's not it's not a deep class i would have liked a deeper class and, and i do think ohio state needs to reevaluate how they go about building classes in this modern era uh i i think that's a thing and it's to me, it's it's focusing in on high on Ohio a little bit more. Um, again, sometime in January, I think Kyle and I are going to like do a 2025 mock. And I'm going to it's going to be part mock and part wish cast like. It's going to be part me, uh, you know, I need to really reevaluate my 2025 mock to reflect what I think Ohio State should start doing and what I think they will start doing. But mostly what I think they should start doing, which is building a really solid regional class. Of Ohio kids, Indiana kids, PA kids, you know, Michigan kids and. Build a really solid class and then just try to sprinkle some guys on top mm -hmm. and, and, and it's gonna I, be it's gonna be a big class too it's gonna be a big yeah. class kyle this class this 2024 class we've been we've done how many we did how many mocks in the year 2023 for this class i mean during the summer we did one every month mm -hmm. yeah i projected this class I projected this class at 28 24? kid at 28. Oh. I, I, I don't know if I had like a very consistent number as far as the mock went. I don't know if I was always trying to hit a specific number, but I think I always had it like 27 to 29, maybe 26 to 29, somewhere in that area. Um, and, and they finished with 21. And I, I never projected a long snapper into the class, so 20. Um, it's not a big enough class because what you can get in the transfer portal are starters. You can go get David Igbenosa. You can go get. N name your guy. You can go get starters out of the portal. Your Ohio State, you can go steal some starters out of the portal, which you're going to have a really, really hard time doing. In the portal. Is finding guys who are going to come into Columbus and compete for a job. Guys are going to want to come in and start. So you need to build a solid foundational roster and then. As needed, go to the portal and snag a starter. Mm -hmm. Now, if I can spin it positively for a second, Kyle, 
If I can spin it positively. All right. One one of the reasons why I feel like this is a smaller class and one of the reasons why I was projecting such a big class was because I was expecting a real mass exodus from this class, from the starters. We, we, you know, we've already had 17 players leave to the portal. <laughs> but of the starters, I was projecting a mass exodus of players. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's happening. I, I thought that a lot of those class of 2021 kids, there's a lot of those 2021 kids who I were I was expecting to go three and out. Marvin Harrison Jr., one of those kids, I still expect to go. I, ex I still expect him to go to the NFL. I know there's been a, there was a lot of buzz and a lot of conversation, a lot of talk, but I think the further you get away from that Michigan game, the more level headed, the more logic over emotion you, you yep. become, and you start to make the correct choice. Um, but yeah, the. The point is, is that I think that a lot of guys who I had expecting all year to leave, let's say Mike Hall, let's say Jack Sawyer, are guys who I would now, and I don't, I don't know anything. This is not breaking news here. This isn't what we're doing in this episode. We're not predicting who comes and who goes. That's another episode. How I, I'm mentioning a lot of episodes we're probably going to do in January. We need to be writing these down. We'll do a prediction show that is like who's staying and who's going. Um, maybe we will. Maybe we won't. I don't. By by the time the bowl game ends, there might be a ton of guys just starting yeah. announcing. But yep. If you had asked me at the beginning of this season, Michael and and Jack Sawyer, oh, they're definitely gone. Now I'm not sure because I believe Ohio state along with a lot of other big programs in the country are starting to invest money, not so much into the high school kids, Jared, why, why can't we be Miami? Why can't we back up the Brinks truck and, and steal five-star players? Why can't we do this? Why can't we do that? Miami sucks. Texas A&M sucks. Like, you only have so much money and I don't know what the finances are. People will say Ohio state NIL is terrible and it's bad and it's, I, I haven't seen the books. I don't know. But what you are seeing is if you have a talent filled roster, a lot of that NIL budget, a lot of that pie is going to keep the players who are already on the roster. And maybe keep them out of the NFL. Maybe keep them out of the transfer portal. Miami doesn't have that problem. Who, who is Miami trying to keep on the roster right now? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. And, and for what it's worth, Miami has straight up not paid kids what they've promised paying them in the past as yeah. well. So when you're like, well, why can't Ohio that? State do what Miami does and just pay off these players and have them come in? Well, Ohio State, uh, you know, keeps promises. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's easy to promise the money. It's, it's the old Seinfeld bit. You know, anyone can take a reservation holding the reservation and so who you who you are you in this class here jared kind of um moving on here who, who are you most excited about from this class here so there are obvious answers you got you got jeremiah smith or jj smith uh mylon graham you're sure the two the two stellar white five-star wide receivers. Uh, you got Edric Houston as well, uh, who potentially may see a lot of play time as well. Uh, Aaron Scott, I think, could see the field as a true freshman. A lot of hype with Aaron Noland, uh, Bryce West, uh, James Peoples, uh, 
Yeah, a lot, a lot of a lot of na- a lot of uh, great names here. But who who are you most excited to see on the on the field this fall? This fall? Oh, well, that's a different question. I was lined. Up, I was lining up one question, and then you added this fall to it. I mean, because okay, that changes well, the equation, right? Okay, okay. Then, then just, just who are you most excited for? Period in this class. I, 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 I'm saying this one because it's a horrible position of need for Ohio. Like, yeah, everyone's excited about Jeremiah Smith, of course. We got a talent-filled roster of of wide receivers. What I'm, who I'm really excited to see. And I say this because one, it's a good storyline. And two, because I've been projecting these two individuals into this recruiting class. Since we were talking about recruiting classes, two recruiting classes ago, that's the Armstrong twins, Devante and Deontay Armstrong. Who doesn't want, who doesn't want two tackles who are twins starting for your team? Seems yeah. seems like a no brainer to me. Feels like a no brainer to me. You got a pair of tackles yeah. out there playing, or a pair of twins out there playing tackle. Come on, the pregame show writes itself. It does, yeah. I think for me, I, I think he's going to be the next. Um. um Island, the next quarterback island. Uh, I think Aaron Scott for me. I think I think yep. Aaron Scott could be could be the next um stellar quarterback at Ohio State. He has he has the size, he has the speed, he has everything going for him to be a very, very stellar cornerback in college. So I, I'm really excited to see how Aaron Scott develops. I mean, and, you know, we'll, let's let's throw Bryce West in there as well. Like yeah, Bry- Bryce West as well. I, I the said, Glenville yeah. pipeline is back exactly. Open. Yeah, I'm really excited to see another um, great kid from Glenville at Ohio State here. See that pipeline open back up here. Yeah, ho- ho- hope the best for Bryce West, which means means a lot for he's for, not the uh, only Glenville. Cleveland Glenville, not the only Glenville kid on on in this class, Kyle. Tight end to Marion Witten, who again, yeah. mm-hmm. oh, but Jared, he's only a three star. He's he's only ranked eight. He's only ranked with a, a score of eighty nine. He's Jared. He's he's the sixteenth best player in the state of Ohio, and he's the twenty seventh best tight end in the country. How good? Yeah, just just watch. It's, he's it's, got he's got the he put, just put just a little bit more put a little bit more weight on him. And he's he's going to be a a bruising tight end. Ted Ginn Senior says he's a wide receiver. By the way, well, we'll that, see that the size he has right now six four two fifteen. Yeah, that that, yeah. that that that's a wide receiver wide receiver there. Yes, <laughs> we'll we'll see. Um, Ohio State does only get two wide receivers in this class. Um, so hey, maybe that's your third wide receiver. Maybe maybe not. We'll see. Um, yeah, it's. Yeah, you have Avril Reese, who was in last year's class. There's already some uh, really well, good Glenville kids who are um, f- for sure targets I mean, in the 2025 class. I mean, to wrap up the the other tight end too, uh, Max LeBlanc as yeah. well. Um, another pretty much the same same dimensions. Um, yeah, the, the same dimensions as uh, as Witten as well. He's six three and a half 220 pretty much the same size too and he has he has what it takes to be a really good tight end as well too so maybe he's a wide receiver too jared (laughs) nah he's from canada don't don't let that chattanooga tennessee yeah i know i know he's yeah yeah he's listen it's not often that ohio state gets to go north to recruit a player that's all i'm saying Normally well, you they, just end up well, in they, Michigan. Well, they go across the ocean. Well, they go across the ocean a few times. Eh, that's for kickers. That's for punters. That's for kickers just, that's and punters, punters have feelings too, Jared. Do they? Um, All right. Um, the next thing I want to talk about here, Jared, just looking at the class as a whole here, 
<laughs> By the way, um, just uh, Ryan Day says to Marion Witten uh, recruitment started early on. Ted Ginn Sr. This is this is from Ryan Day. If I didn't already say that Ted Ginn Sr. told Day early on that he could be the best wide receiver in the country. He's going to have to grow into a tight end if that's where he's going to end up. His ceiling is extremely high. That's it. That's that's that's, that's some big words. That's some big words from from Ted Ginn Senior, who has seen a lot of great talent coming out of out of his um his football program. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, I want to I want to go back. You asked the question, and then who are you most excited about? And then you shifted it at the last second, and you said excited about seeing this fall. And then you shifted it back after I complained. Mm-hmm. Immediate impact player. I believe the immediate impact player on this team is James Peoples. Um, it depend depends. I think that depends on what happens with number thirty-two. I don't think it depends upon what happens with number thirty-two. Um, I, I'm I'm saying that living under the assumption that Henderson's coming back. Okay. I think James Peoples could very well compete for the third running back spot on the team. Um, I mean, the first two spots are locked down, obviously, but I I think that he could very well compete for that third running back spot. Mm-hmm. One thing I like about James Peoples, Jared, it's a cool name. You, 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 yeah, it's a, it's a cool name, but uh, so, some great running backs that's come to Ohio State. Uh, and I, I, th- I don't think it's a coincidence. Uh, they do very well in the uh, in track and field, mainly in the uh, in the hurdles um, field. Is he from Piqua? No, he's not from Piqua. Oh, where was he? Nah, he? James People is from San Antonio. Okay. No, he he runs a hurdle. He runs the hurdles in, in high school. Okay. Is, oh, is you know, it's saying. just that he runs the hurdles. Yes, it's just that he runs the hurdles. Like there's, oh, there's sorry. been you, you had good, me real confused. Really good running backs out of Ohio State that's run the hurdles, and he and he 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 does pretty well too. So, fair. He, he's got to be good then. He's got to be good. By the way, James Peoples won't compete for the third running back spot. He'll be the third running back. I forgot for a second. Ohio State doesn't have any damn running backs on the team. Ohio State, if Henderson returns, which you want to talk about a guy who I wouldn't have ever considered a pot at the beginning of the season would not have considered a possibility that Henderson returns. But even if Henderson returns, Peoples is the third running back on this team. Um, I Sam Williams, Sam Williams Dixon can compete for that as well. Um, but again, if we're talking like a true ready to go running back, I think Peoples just has a, a leg up. Whereas, you know, same way Dixon might be more of a third down running back to, to start with. Um, yeah, James, if you, you we're talking about availability, we're talking about opportunity. Um, James Peoples is the absolute lockdown immediate impact player on this team. I think, I think the big thing that we're going to see as the, the next three or so years here, who's going to have a better career, James Peoples at Ohio State out of San Antonio or Jordan Marshall out of Cincinnati who decided to take his talents up north? Don't know. But both, both of them are very, very close rated to each other here. Don't know. Yeah. Um, well, that, that, and that, that's about why lockdown, said, that's, you want to talk about locking down Ohio. And of course, Ohio State try is they didn't like Ohio State has messed up in the past and slow played Ohio kids and then missed out on them because they slow played them. It's not what happened with yeah. Marshall. Just I hear people say that it's not what happened with Mar- Ohio State went after Marshall hard. He just decided to play somewhere else. You're not always going to win. You're not always going to win. Even the Ohio kids, you're not always going to win. Yeah. Yep. 
All right. Um, so back to what I was about to um, discuss here, Jared. We mentioned mentioned earlier about expecting this class to be um, having more recruits in the in this class. Only ended up with uh, twenty twenty one in here. L- looking at here, one quarterback signed. Okay, that's yeah. that's normal. Two two running backs, uh, James Peoples and Sam Williams Dixon. I perfectly fine. Oh, hold on, before kind of. Two running backs would normally be just fine. You have to remember that they got zero in last year's class. Which is why the door is wide open for peoples to contribute right away. Fair enough. Uh, wide receivers were projected three to four. We got two. W- w- was projected to get that third, but decided to go to Oregon instead. But I, I, I think I think two I think two is fine. Fine. I think it's fine with the talent that Ohio State has already. Let's, this was this was bound to happen. Yeah. This was bound to happen. Th- this this is Brian Hartline being a victim of his own success. Look, look who is currently. This is who is currently on the Ohio State roster at wide receiver. Now we expect Marvin Harrison Jr. to leave, but Marvin Harrison Jr., Emeka Abuka who we also, I think, kind of expect to leave. Okay, but even beyond those two, Jaden Ballard, uh, Keon Grays, Kojo Antwi, Brandon Ennis, Carnell Tate, Noah Rogers, Bryson Rogers, and it doesn't even include Jeremiah Smith and Mylon Graham. So you're looking at Jaden Ballard, uh, Grays, Antwi, Ennis, Tate, Roger, Rogers, ahead of you on the day one before you walk in. He, Ryan Hartline just became a victim of his own success. Like, you can only load the wide receiver room so much before guys just start saying, mm-hmm. I, I, that, that, that yeah. bus looks full, buddy. That's, yep, that's fair. Yeah, it is. Um, tight ends one to two. I say ended up getting two. Okay. Offensive line. This this was definitely something that we've been talking about all of 2023. Offensive line. High State has recruited recently Poorly. badly. They they've got they gotta they gotta recruit well here. And they yes, they got the Armstrong twins, and I and I think those are good additions. But is there is there one that's like a just the stellar, no, like the stellar offensive lineman in this in this class here? And the answer is no. Yeah, in more in more, I think it would be a good, um, be a good guard or center. But I'm not. But I'm not worried about guard. Like I feel like we got good I, guards. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I yeah. I'm, I'm I'm not either. But you have that that big six 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 seven tackle who you just like yep i trust him to be um a left tackle or or right tackle if a certain quarterback starts uh <laughs> to Maybe. yeah um to be there and be like yeah i'm not i'm not worried about him i don't need to put in a a tight end to help chip we, we didn't get that in this class uh i mean they they tried man they tried i know i know uh, i know they tried but they, but they missed yeah but they, they missed and, and that's that, that's and by that's the way, what we got to go off of here. We called it. We absolutely called it. Last week or last episode, we did our close calls episode and we included a player. We included a player who we said, gee, we know we know you just committed to Colorado, but we're still going to include you in this close calls episode or closing calls episode. And guess what? He didn't sign with Colorado. He just did. Oh, did he? Yep. He just did as we uh, hit the uh, record button here. He has officially signed to Colorado. Oh, good for him. He put him up. Yeah, that's. I think that's how that always works with Colorado. Um, and Miami and Texas A&M. 
But oh, good for him. I, I thought that he was gonna. I thought he was gonna carry that through to uh, February. Good for him. There was heavy rumors he was about to flip to Maryland of all places. Um, hey, or Nebraska. I heard. I heard Nebraska too. You had um, um, I, I Rayola. Trying to convince them to. Yeah, yeah, I know. Sure. Yeah, I, 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 I know. Nebraska wasn't going to happen. <laughs> um, based off of based off of comments, based off of comments that Seton, I don't know why I kept refusing to say his name, uh, that Seton made. Um, I'm going to say that Maryland made sense, but Nebraska didn't. Uh, I'm not going to go into why. Um, but yeah, I, we'll, we'll see him in the transfer portal later on, I am sure. Kyle Garrett Stover. We haven't talked about Garrett Stover yet. Uh, cousin, of course, of Cade Stover. Yeah. Is he a, a safety? And ju just like his cousin, is he a safety? Is he a linebacker? Is he going to end up a tight end in a couple tight years? End. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So linebackers, Hase ended up getting two in this recruiting class, which is about what we projected. I think that I think the er the other areas that Hase State uh, missed was defensive tackle and defensive end. The defensive, really, both sides of the of the uh, of the uh, of the line here, offensive defensive line. I think overall, Ohio State missed. Yes, they kept Edric Houston, huge, huge, yeah, huge, huge, absolutely. But I think as overall, Ohio State missed in this recruiting class on both sides of the ball, and that's something that they needed to improve on on the offensive line mainly. But you, you didn't. You didn't add to depth on the defensive side. You need to add additional elite talent on the offensive line. Yeah. You only got one defensive tackle and Eric Mensa, who flipped for Virginia Tech and then mentioned Edric Houston on the uh, defensive end. And we were but, projecting about two to, two to three for each of those positions. And Mensa isn't even necessarily a defensive tackle for what it's worth. Yeah. He's yeah. kind of a tweener. So, like, if you're looking for, like, a big run-stopping defensive tackle, he's not him. Yeah, so, um, so if I look at defensive... So if I look at defensive tackles here, Jared, like, who's... Who's, who's Ohio left State, here? Ohio State is still looking to supplement. Uh, two, they're right now, that I know of, that I have heard from reliable people, two targets that Ohio State uh, is still pursuing. Um, and I want to say one thing before I talk about those two guys, I don't know why more players don't wait. I don't know why more players don't wait because they're, you, they're, they're afraid that they're going to miss out. That that's what it is. They're, sure. They're and if you're going to miss out and that, and that and door is going to shut. And if you're a, a low three-star guy, sure. But if you're Dominic Kirks or if you're Dominic McKinley, who are one's an elite five star guy, the other one's a pretty dang good four star guy. Like, you're not gonna just end up without a scholarship. You're gonna find a home. I don't know why more players don't wait because you are now in a very, very strong seller's market. All these other players are off the board. They're done. The the they have they're off the market. Why more players don't wait and join this l very limited product, very limited player supply market that exists after na after the first national signing day? I will not understand. It feels like such a slam dunk. Anyway, Ohio State is pursuing Dominic Kirks. Dominic Kirks is uh, a defensive tackle from Plainsville, Ohio. Um, is that, excuse me, that is Painesville, Ohio. Painesville, Ohio. Um, he is, uh, or he has been, he still is, uh, committed to Washington for a very, very, very long time since I believe June. Uh, 
I we talked I, I had Dominic Kirks in Ohio State mocks at different points during the course of this summer. Um, I, I really like him. I, I think that he's 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 again not going to be like a giant nose tackle type defensive tackle unless he adds some real bulk while at Ohio State. Um, but he can absolutely be a three tech defensive tackle. Um, again, I think he's an incredibly solid player from an incredibly insult, uh, solid Ohio class this year. Um, and for what it's worth, I think Ohio State can get him. The fact that he didn't sign, the fact that he did not sign on on National Signing Day is all of the indication you need that uh, Ohio State's in great position to finalize that flip for Dominic Kirks. Mm -hmm. Then you have Dominic McKinley, uh, who was supposed to sign with Texas A&M and then didn't. So guess what? He's now super hot shit. Because more players should test out the secondary market. More players should test out the secondary market. Um, it, again, it feels like such a non, such a no brainer to any of the talent, like highly talented players. Mm -hmm. um, this would be an enormous achievement. Um, he is, he's a five star player. Like what, what else do I have to say? Um, he very yeah. much will be a big nose tackle guy as a high schooler. He's six, five and a half two eighty. You get him into the big boy locker room, training room, all that. He'll be comfortably up over 300. Um, yeah, this is, he's going to be an absolute stud wherever he ends up. Um, but I, uh, you know, I hope Ohio state, I hope Ohio State wins here, but I'm not going to hold out a ton. I hope that it happens. Yeah, Texas is making a huge push here and is actually starting to trend more towards Texas way here, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. All right. I think I'm scrolling back up here. So linebackers, Peyton we have Pierce. Peyton, Peyton Pierce and Garrett Stover. Corners. We're projecting a big, bigger class here. Four to five ended up with three West Scott Lockhart. I, I don't mind only going three here, um, especially the especially the talent that Ohio State got because they got because they got the three right guys. Um, Correct. And then the safeties, they ended up getting two, which I think I'm, I was fine with uh, uh, McLean and um, and Rocker. But but with recent things that we've seen. We've heard the past week or two here just some movements that may happen with the safeties here. It kind of they they need a little concerning, safeties. a little concerning, but they needed three safeties. Um, again, if we look at the current roster, um, yeah, current roster you got Carter. Ran you have ransom. Ransom. If Ransom leaves, so if we assume, so let's just project Ransom as leaving. Yep. So you have you Carter. Have Jod Carter, Malik Hartford, and those are probably your starting two safeties. Mm -hmm. um, again, it it's it's being projected at this time that, that Styles is going to move to linebacker or potentially to maybe even defensive end, maybe the Jack position. Um, the point being is that it doesn't look like styles is going to play safety. And then you have the um, red shirts of Bonsu and Hawkins as well, too. Right. We, we saw Hartford play um, Bonsu and Hawkins. Uh, you know, as Kyle said, they red shirted this year. Maybe we'll get to see them a bit during the cotton bowl. I'm not sure. Um, mm, more, more on that next next episode. More on that next episode. Um, really could have used like a. When I say they really needed three safeties. I'm including like a portal player in that. Um, missing on Ramsey out of the transfer portal could prove to be incredibly bad for Ohio state. Um, 
they they do have what I would say a, a really I mean the 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 cornerback room right now is pretty is pretty loaded. It's loaded. It's loaded if Hancock returns. It's loaded if Hancock returns. I I am assuming Denzel Burke leaves. Hancock, I'll just say I don't know, but you know they have at that point you have Styles, uh, the elder Styles who transferred in from Notre Dame. You have Igbenosen. We got you saw Jermaine Matthews play a lot last year, um, and and looking really good as a true freshman doing it. So like I feel good about Jermaine Matthews sort of joining the fray. Um, but you know, the problem becomes you, you don't, I don't, I feel much better if Jermaine Matthews was the third corner and not the second corner. So again, how does, you know, I don't know. Hopefully Hancock returns. Hopefully Hancock yep. returns. All right. So heard, and short, we've also short heard a lot of so, really good stuff about, about, uh, Simpson hunt. Yeah. I mean, so, so short, short answer. I mean, I mean, Jared, we we're spoiled with how, how good Ohio state has, has recruited here. I mean, it, it's the currently the fourth best recruiting class in, in this year. I, we can look at the past few recruiting classes and be like, Oh, we were top five in this class and top five for that class and top five for mm -hmm. that class. What, what, how much of that is being carried by the quarterbacks and the wide receivers? If the problem becomes, and we can be like, oh, look, they have a great per average and they have a great, and we can, the problem is, is that a lot of those numbers are being artificially bolstered by wide receiver talent who we can't get all on the field at the same time who end up transferring out because they can't get on the field. Um, and quite frankly, we haven't had, we haven't had a big name from out of state. That's an important qualifier. We haven't had a big name from out of state, a giant recruit from out of state at offensive tackle since Nicholas Petit Fury. And that's devastating. Um, so we can talk about top five class, top five this, top five that. But when it's always wide receivers and it's always quarterbacks and you can only put three wide receivers on the field in a normal formation, you can only put one quarterback on the field in a normal formation. It's it starts to not look as good as it. I mean, what be. about Donovan Jackson? I said it tackle. Okay. I said it tackle. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. So, so it yeah, would have so, been Ohio, Ohio state does not. I'm going to, I need to talk about the offensive line for a second. We project forward. If we can project forward for the offensive line a bit. Yeah. Ohio state loses one player off of the offensive line. They were turning four. I pray to God. <laughs> and by the way, we, we don't we don't know if Jackson's returning or not. Just we, so it might it might be losing two, returning three. Mm -hmm. uh, Hinsman will return. Fryer will return. Simmons will return. Jackson may or may not return. I expect him to return, but I don't know. Yep. Ohio State cannot go into, you know, September. What, what is September 1st? I don't know when's when when the first game is next year. Just replacing the right guard and that's it. You can't we can't roll with that offensive line again. I don't think nope. just making them a year older is going to fix it enough. And quite frankly, I don't know. I don't know if the answer is on the bench. I, I like I like Montgomery. 
I think Montgomery could be available. He, he's true freshman this year. I hope that he will age into the into a starting role next year. Eventually take over at tackle, maybe play guard this season. But in in like my most ideal ideal idyllic. I would love to see I would love to have seen, let's just say, like Carter Smith or Chase Basantis, both of whom have taken their names back out of the portal and they're staying in Indiana and and Texas A&M. Mm -hmm. Would have loved to have seen one of those guys or someone like one of those guys um, come in, play left tackle, which would move Simmons over to right tackle. And then you could maybe take Fryer and bump him inside to right guard and or, you know, Montgomery take over at right guard. Um, Hinsman, I, I think, is fine if he gets a bit bigger. He needs a bit bigger, a bit stronger. Um, I think Jackson would be fine if they if he had the guys around him again. Um, but you, we cannot. But you know, bottom line is ne neither Smith nor Basantis uh, did come in, and maybe there'll be someone else. Maybe there'll be someone yeah. else that you can get, but. I if if we go into next if we if, if week one our starting tackles are Simmons and Fryer again I'm going to be upset. Yeah. All right, I think I think that we'll wrap that up right there as our for our update our recruiting update here. Uh, By the way, uh, just, just to throw in a just, quick bit of portal talk. Um, we already talked about. Ramsey went to USC. Um, Caleb uh, Elam's or went to TCU. Um, Basantis removed himself from the portal. Um, a new name has emerged at linebacker, uh, Tackett Curtis, who, if you were watching our recruiting episodes last year, uh, we talked about Tackett Curtis a lot. He ended up going to USC, uh, but Ohio State pursued him very heavily. Um, my understanding is that Knowles really, really liked him. So you could see an addition to the linebacker room in Tackett Curtis. Um, but Ohio State really needs a safety and a, and again, a tackle. Yeah. Ohio State really yeah. needs a safety there's, and a tackle out of the portal. Yeah, there, there's a yeah, a lot I want to say, but we'll we'll just we'll just end it there. We'll 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 get back to this in 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 a couple of weeks here and we'll get back into the recruiting talks again here. Yeah, I'm looking for, we're going to do a 2025 recruiting. And, and uh, I, I'll a, a new, say 2025 mock. And I, I'm going to say I'm going to I'm going to totally rehash because in our discord server plugs doing doing plugs uh, in our discord server, we have the we have our 2025 mock class just perma published in there that anyone can look at at any time. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to get rehashed, yeah, I, though. Uh, from what yeah. it currently I mean, is. I, I mean, I will say that the Discord two that you were just saying, Jared.com. Discord.thesloopcast.com. Yeah. I was going to say the two they were just talking about, offensive tackle and safety need to lock down for next year. Well, there's two in, in Ohio State's backyard here that they need to lock down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, in 2025, sure, but that's – I'm not talking about – I think Ohio State has good young talent at safety. I think Ohio State has decent young talent at tackle. I'm talking – Yeah, for, for the 2024 Plug and play season. 24 I, – I like the young I gotcha. talent. I like the young talent at safety and tackle right now. Um, I just don't see starters, unfortunately. Not not 2024 starters, I should say. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, no, there's just a lot of um, a lot of up in the airs here. We're, we're about to record our um our next episode here for Know Your Enemy. Just a lot, a lot of that's going to be 
up in the air of who's going to be playing and who's not going to be playing in the Cotton Bowl. So, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to to see who's which Ohio State team we're going to see uh, next Friday. And we, I mean, Missouri could be missing guys too. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Well, it, it does make it difficult for sure. All right, Kyle. Um, anything else? No, I'm. I think I think we're good. We are good. Uh, tonight's ending music brought to you by a folk punk band from the Columbus area, going by the name of Two Cow Garage. Two Cow Garage. So, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Two Cow Garage.